Hello, it's our turn to delve into Network Exchange. And today we will learn how to have the PR query other devices, making it a network master. I will be assisted by a module from the MX110 series. This is MV110 24-8A, an 8-channel analog input module. I will connect a temperature sensor PT1000 to its first input and I will display its readings on the PR screen. But first, a bit of theory. The interface we will use to connect the PR and the input module is called RS485. This is a serial interface, which means that the devices you connect with it should be connected to each other in sequence, one after the other. In such a network, there can be two types of devices. A master device, the main one in the network, there is always only one of those, and the slave devices, there can be many of these. In our case, PR will be the network master, and the input-output module will be a slave device. The RS485 interface has a number of parameters. The first is the exchange protocol. For example, the language on which devices will communicate in the net. We will work with the Modbus protocol. There are three types. Modbus RTU, Modbus ASCII, and Modbus TCP. We will need a Modbus RTU. The second setting is the data transfer rate. It is usually set in the range from 9600 to 150,200 bits per second. The shorter the communication line and the fewer the interfaces on it, the higher the exchange rate can be chosen. The next parameter is the device address in the net. It is only for slave devices and is needed so that the master can distinguish them from each other. Addresses are set in the range from approximately 1 to 240. Address 0 is usually reserved for broadcast mailing. Addresses at the end of the range may be reserved for some additional system functions. So, we choose a slightly shorter range from 1 to 240. The main thing is that the addresses of all devices in your network do not repeat. The other parameters are correctly set by default in our case and will not be important. But in general, follow the simple principle. When you configure the RS485 interface on all devices in the network, all network parameters should be the same, except for the network addresses which means the same protocol, the same speed, the same parity control, and so on. The addresses of the slave devices are different and do not repeat. To query this module using PR, you need to know its settings. Modules of the MX110 line are configured using the configurator program on your computer. It is free, and can be downloaded from our website. The configuration procedure is very simple and is described in detail in the operation manual for the modules. If needed, we will also make a video on setting this up. My module will have the following settings. We will use the Modbus RTU. I will set the speed to 115,200. I will set the network address to 20. Also, to read data from it, you need to know which command the master should use to address that, and in which cell of the internal memory of this module the data we are interested in are located. This information is also in the operation manual, and I will insert a screenshot somewhere here. We will need a function or command called read holding register. 
its number is 0x03. And the data we need, as we already know, I will connect the temperature sensor PT1000 to first analog in R in cells number 4 and 5. Now let's teach our PR to query this module. For this, we go to the device and device configuration. There is already one RS485 interface added by default. We will work with it. If for some reason it is not there or you deleted it, you can always add it through the context menu. The first setting you specify is the slot number. PR200 can have up to two RS485 interfaces, and you need to choose the one to which you are actually connected the wires. For me, this will be RS485-1. Next, you need to specify in which mode PR will operate in this interface. Today, we are interested in master mode. Next, we specify the exchange protocol and choose RTU. Data transfer rate 115,200, the same as for the input-output modules. Other network settings, as I said, we do not touch. They are by default the same as those that are also set by default on the input-output module. Now, by right-clicking, we add a slave device to this interface, which we plan to query. There can be several. One for each input-output module that you connect to this interface. In the settings, we specify the name of this slave so that we ourselves do not get confused between devices in the project. And mandatorily, set its network address. I would like to remind you, our MV's address is 20. You can also specify the pooling period, this points, timeout, and number of attempts if the default settings do not suit you, for example, to make module pooling more frequent, or, conversely, less frequent if the data on it do not change so often. Now it is necessary to form a list of data that we will read from this module, or which we will write to it if it is a control module. For this, we find the list of variables and add a new variable here. By default, Boolean parameters are created, but we need a real type parameter since we are reading the value of an analog input. For example, temperature. For this type of parameter, we change it to a real parameter. Well, let's change its name. I will call it temp1. Next, we indicate in which memory cell this parameter lies. I remind you, the value from the first analog input in the module lies in registers number 4 and 5. Here we indicate the first of these two registers. The second is counted automatically. Our reading function is 0x03. This is the same command reading holding register. We do not need a writing function because of this parameter. We are only reading from the module, not writing into it. You can also link variables to commands for starting reading, starting writing, and the status of this polling, which is necessary when you are more finely manually setting up your communication line. We will not need them for our example. And one more important point concerning real data type, for example, real numbers. They occupy 4 bytes, 2 registers by 2 bytes in each. And in different devices, these 4 bytes are stored in different orders. This thing is not standardized. 
therefore to shuffle the data read from the network from the order in which they were stored in the slave into the order needed by PR, two check boxes are used, change register order and change byte order. In most cases, their position is easier to pick up in practice than to remember. There are only four variants, but for our module, I know for sure that you need to set the parameters like this. Now we will display this variable, temp1, on the screen. For this, we enter the screen editor. We add data input output, choose the real data type, and as a variable we tie the network variable. To choose it, we find the network variables tab on the right, slot 1, and here lies our variable temp1 in the module. If you had added other slave devices, then in this interface there would be several other tabs, one for each slave. And let's specify how many total signs we are interested in. What number of signs will be after decimal point? And we make the text before. Temp1 equals space and the text after space and capital letter Celsius degree. We set editable parameter to no. This parameter we only show on the screen. We cannot set it. Now we record this project in PR and check how it works. So what do we get? Let's check it out at our stand. Here I have connected the RS485 terminals of the PR200 to the terminals of the NV110 module. Let's try to touch our PT1000 temperature sensor and see how the data coming from the module changes. That's all for now. In the next video, we will learn how to set up PR in slave mode. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to visit our pages on social networks. See you!